Shalom Rastafari. We want to do this video and call it How Do Rastafari Hebrews? How do I and I, as the Amanyoch, and those who say Amen to the King of Kings in Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach's name, how do we celebrate? Right? How do we celebrate Sukkot? Well, now from a Hebrew perspective, we say Chag, right? Chag Semeach. Right, or Simcha, right, Chag Simcha, right, which is um, to say uh, happy and a joyous feast and a festival. Now, if you look into Leviticus chapter 23, right, chapter 23, you'll see all the feasts and the festivals, and this is the seventh, right, this is the fulfillment, and Sukkot mean, mean booths, like booths is like to say huts. In fact, I wanted to bring a uh, show a little iconography, Ethiopian iconography. We see it all the time when we're looking at, you know, videos of uh, what they call Africa, right? And even in the highlands of Ethiopia, right? So the symbolic type, you can see this right over here with the daughter of, um, with the daughter of uh, Zion, right? The Ethiopian daughter of Zion right here in the in the booth, right? You know, a temporary structure, a temporary abode, right? So these these lives that we live, right? At home and abroad and in the diaspora, we're like in this temporary condition, right? And it recalls how the Israelites, how the Israelites coming out of Egypt, right? The, the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. It was in bondage in the sense that the the Western uh, Gentile minded tell us it wasn't like what we went through, what the lost sheep went through in this uh, Western diaspora. It's not that prophecy there, that Deuteronomy, right? That Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight sixty eight is speaking about the enslavement of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, so called Negroes, uh, so called blacks, right? So called blacks, Afro. Afro-American and Afro-Hispanic peoples, right, that know that we have that seed, that Zara'a Ya'akob, right? Anyway, getting into that is just to kind of explain a little bit about the background, because we need to have a background of Sukkot, right, of Sukkot. Now, we find that there's a very important prophetic word. We touched on it earlier, right, leading up to Sukkot, this time of tabernacles. It's also called tabernacles. And indwelling. Now we have a vid that actually, by the time we put this one up there, that vid was already broadcast. And that video basically was inspired and inspired reading from um, James. And before we really got to more scrutinize the Hebrew for Christians list, right, we already did the video where we're touching on James. The Holy Spirit wanted us to touch on wars. Where do these wars, these wars and rumors of wars, because we're in this time of the blood moon sign, right? And, and this blood moon sign is very significant, it's prophetic, especially for the children of the Ethiopians and the children of Israel. Yahweh has already spoken, right? And his word won't return to him void. So we should receive it in spirit and in truth and in his grace and in his truth. So how do we celebrate, right? How do we celebrate? We already touched on why we should celebrate this, but how do we celebrate? It's not under the old covenant, but it's under the Brit Chadasha, under the Hadis Kidan. And the new covenant is his word dwelling. It's his word dwelling and abiding in us. For those who want to do a, a, a little bit of a King James Bible word study, It'll be interesting to look up the word abiding and look up the word dwell and dwelling, right? And look for those references there because the underlying word comes to the same meaning of abiding and dwelling, to have Yeshua HaMoshiach, to have his word, the reality, abide and dwell in us. This is why uh, Sukkot is a type of tabernacles, right? Sukkot for us is type of, is tabernacles, is tabernacle, and the festival of tabernacle was a type of, you could have turned it's a type of Gietaz Erat, of the Lord's Supper. It's a type of the Lord's Supper. And that's what the video that we posted up there 
Um, we hope that it speaks to that and it expresses that and explains that. But we touched on James, right? We touched on James because it gives us practical, right? Practical um, instruction, practical guidance. You know, we say guidance, Idrin, guidance, Sistrin. Well, the guidance comes through his word, comes through his indwelling and his abiding presence in us, right? And the fruit of that, right? The fruit of that is also in our relationship with our brothers and sisters. This is what James chapter, the, the, the whole book of James is actually to be read for this Shabbat. In fact, since we're still in the holy day season, let me share this with ones and ones because ones and ones want to know, you know, and this is why we say go to RastafariGroundation.com and on the right hand side, especially within these days, right? We have about, um, I think this is the fourth, fifth day um, of Sukkot. Depends on what time we're recording this in the AM hours. So near in the AM hours, so the time is going to be changing up on that. But um, we celebrate Sukkot, right? Why we as Rastafari Hebrews, right? We as the Beta Israel, the redeemed Ethiopian Hebrew, Beta Israel. We celebrate Sukkot in the Lord's Supper, right? In Adoni's Sup, in the Master's evening, in that evening meal, right? We, we, we allow His Word to dwell in us, right? Because He says so Himself that if we receive His Word, the key is His Word. Right, and you say word, sound, and power. So, my brothers and sisters, I pray that this be a happy and a, a rich feast and festival as we're coming to the fullness of this cycle, right? The fullness of this year coming into a new season and a new time. So, let Christ dwell richly. In the eye, hearts, and minds. When the mojah hit touch, brothers and sisters. So, Melkam, Yadas, Baal, Hag, Simcha, Shalom, Sukkot, Shalom, Shabbat, Shalom.